Hi guys and welcome to your last video in chapter 11. Tonight we are going to look at stoichiometry and how it relates to gases. So yes, we are going back to that information that you have hopefully now finished in chapter 9. So as we look at stoichiometry and gases, we see that there are two different types. We have volume-volume stoichiometry, which is done the same as mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry, and we have mass-volume stoichiometry. When we look at volume-volume stoichiometry, it can be done the same as mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry because our coefficients, if we remember, also can equal volume and liters in particular. And that's because we have this 22.4 liters in one mole. So because we have that constant, we can also use volume. So if we do mole-mole stoichiometry, it's the same idea. Now when we do mass volume stoichiometry, if we are in STP, we can basically run it using 22.4 liters in one mole, and we can use that to get through our stoichiometry. However, if we are not in STP, our standard temperature and pressure, then we must know the conditions. We need to know P, V, and T because we have to, at some point, plug it into our ideal gas equation because we are still going through moles. So let's see how this is done. In our first example, you can see we have an equation, so the first thing we need to do is balance it. So I've got three O's here and two here, so to balance it I can do three and two. Two times two is four aluminum and I have four aluminum. So now I am going to go through and figure out what I need. So I have 18.3 grams of Al2O3. It was produced at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. So how many liters of O2 gas, so I'm looking for liters of O2 gas were used. Now I was not at STP, I have 25 degrees Celsius, 1.9 atmospheres. So I cannot do a nice, just straightforward stoichiometry, and I have to use my Pevnert equation, or that ideal gas equation. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to plug in moles. Well, I'm not in moles of O2 yet, and these are conditions for that O2. So I have to first change grams of Al2O3 into moles of O2. So this is just like we were doing before. So I have 18.3 grams of Al2O3 times my line. Now I want to get rid of grams, so I'm going to put it on bottom. So grams of Al2O3, and I'm going to change it into moles. And again, grams and moles together, we get one mole of Al2O3. Then we times the line. I want to get rid of moles of Al2O3, so it goes on bottom. And I am going to change it into then moles of O2, because that's ultimately where I want to get to. Now these numbers again come from our coefficients. So we have three moles of O2, and we have two moles of Al2O3. This number comes from adding up our masses. So Al, we have 27, we have two of them. We're going to add it to my oxygen, which is 16, and I have three of them. And that then gives us a total of 102 grams. So now when we do the math, we have 18.3 times 3. We're going to divide it by 102 times 2, and our answer comes out to be 0.269 moles of O2. Now this becomes my N in my Pevnert. I have my T 
and I have my P. My T, however, I need to change. So 25, I can't just put in degrees Celsius. So I am going to change that. So 25 plus 273. So that is going to give me 298 Kelvin. So now it will be easier to plug in. So if you remember, equation PV equals N, R, and T. So my pressure is 1.9 atmospheres. My volume is what I'm looking at. My N is 0.269 moles. My R, well since I'm in ATM, I'm in ATM, my R value goes with ATM, and if you remember that's 0.0821. And then my T value, 298 Kelvin. Now I'm going to solve for V. So I'm going to multiply these three numbers together. I'm going to divide them by 1.9 and my answer becomes 3.46 liters of O2 gas. So again, doing the stoichiometry, getting to moles so that I can plug it into my equation. This one is not in your notes, so I gave you the same equation. You may just want to jot down what the question is. So we're going to balance it the same way. We're going to have 4, 3, and 2. This time we're going to look at how many grams of Al. So I want to find grams of Al to react with 2.4 liters of O2 at STP. So since I'm at STP, I do not need PV equals NRT. I can do straightforward stoichiometry. So let's see how that is done. So I'm going to start with 2.4 liters of O2 and times the line. I want to get rid of liters, so I'm going to put it on bottom. So I'm going to have liters of O2. Now, this is because I'm at STP, I can do a shortcut of liters to liters. So I can change it to liters of AL. Now, these numbers, just like mole to mole, we can use a coefficient. So I'm going to have four liters up on top and three liters on the bottom. I'm going to times the line. I'm going to get rid of liters of AL and I'm going to change it to grams of Al. So liters is going to be 22.4. Remember, this is my molar volume. And then I can change it to grams of Al, which is 27. And then I'm going to do the math. So I'm going to take 2.4 times 4 times 27. I'm going to divide that by 3 times 22.4 and my answer is 3.86 grams of Al. Now, why can I go liters to grams? Well, if I broke this up, I could do it 20 or 2.4 liters of O2 times the line. Still doing my 3 liters of O2, 4 liters of Al times the line. Then I can do 22.4 liters of Al to 1 mole of Al. And then I could times the line and do 1 mole of Al to 27 grams of Al. And I'm still going to get 3.86 grams of Al. So maybe that's what you're more used to seeing. Again, this is the molar volume. But because this is in one mole, and that's always, and this is in one mole, and that's always, and these two will cancel each other out, I can do the shortcut and change liters straight into grams.